In this example, we want to look at charges in an electric field. So I have two charges that are each hanging by uh, strings. They have equal but opposite charges. And so they, of course, attract. But we apply an electric field, constant electric field, horizontal, uh, kind of horizontal, uh, uh, in the to, to the left here, that then causes these to separate. So nothing is moving, it's static, and these uh, charges end up hanging uh, by an angle theta relative to each other, and we want to know what is the magnitude of the electric field given that they're, they're separated by an angle theta. All right. So, uh, we also know the length of each string, which is the same, which we'll call L. All right, uh, since nothing is moving, if we're going to sort of take a look at this, we can think back to Newton's laws and see that this is sort of a statics problem. We can apply uh, Newton's second law to the problem, look at the forces on uh, one or, or both of these charges, and uh, sum the forces equal to zero. So, so let's start with that. Let's look at the forces on uh, one of these objects. Let's take this one. So what are the forces on this this ball? So there's the force due to gravity. That's pointing straight down. Of course, we also, th these uh, are both have mass m as well as the same but opposite amount of charge. Okay, so there's a force due to gravity, and then there's going to be this tension that's coming off at some angle due to the string. Now there's a force due to the electric field, and the force due to the electric field is equal to the charge times the electric field, and since the charge is positive, if I'm looking at the ball on the left, that means the force due to the electric field is also off to the left. So there's also the charge due, the force due to the other charge. And since it's opposite sign, that force is attractive. So there's going to be a force, I'll call this F sub Q, the force due to the other charge. So, I mean, if I wanted, I could, in fact, find the electric field due to the other charge and then add the two uh, electric fields together to do a net electric field. Uh, I'm not sure that really gains me much at this point, so I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, and look at the forces. All right, so if I have all my forces now and then I can start looking at uh, the sum of them. So I have this tension force. So, so where is this pointing? Let's, let's get the, this angle here. So what do I know? So if I look here, if, if uh, this angle here is, is going to be theta over 2, kind of looks like a phi there, but theta over 2, then that angle is theta over 2. And if I um, sort of here, then this is theta over 2 there. So if I want to break the tension into components, I can sort of draw this right triangle, and then I can look at the components in this way. And so it looks like the x component, which is the length of that side, is going to be the magnitude t uh, sine theta over 2, and that's in the uh, x direction. I didn't get my coordinate system, but we'll have the standard here, this plus x plus y. And so then, and it's a positive, the y component is, is this magnitude here of this triangle. So that's t cosine theta over 2 j hat, and it's positive as well. Okay, so there's my tension. The next, I'm going to look at the force due to the electric field. It's going to have its entire magnitude in the x component. And so it's going to have a negative q. It's the charge times the electric field in the i plus nothing in the j. 
Next, if I look at the force due to the other charge, it's entirely in the positive x direction. So I have k times uh, both charges, both product of both charges, both the same, so that's q squared, and then the distance between them squared, which at the moment I'll call d, that's in the i and nothing in the j. So what is, what is d? Let me take a look at that d from Coulomb's law, uh, the denominator, that's d, d squared, the distance between them. Uh, it looks like d is, is uh, twice this distance. And there's, uh, and if I sort of draw this right triangle, I say d is twice um, the distance, which is L sine of theta over 2. Okay, right, so uh, this distance right here is L sine theta over 2, and I've got two of them to get the total distance between the charges. Okay, so that's, I think that's, that's useful to know. And then next, uh, I'll give myself a little more space, then the, uh, the final force is then due to gravity, which is 0x component and negative mg y and the sum of all those which is equal to ma 0 i hat plus 0 j hat nothing is moving and so um everything's equal to 0 all right so if we now uh look at the components here we got two expressions the y gives us t cosine theta over 2 is equal to mg, minus mg is 0, and in the x direction we have a t sine theta minus charge times the electric field, magnitude of the field, plus kq squared, ah, that looks like a g, q squared, over the distance between them squared, which is 2L sine uh, theta, ah, <laughs> sine theta over 2, all squared, and this is equal to 0. Okay, uh, I don't know the, the tension. I was given all these other parameters. I'm trying to find the electric field, so I can go ahead and uh, solve this for tension and then substitute it into this expression. So T, the tension, is mg divided by cosine theta over 2. If I substitute that into here, I get mg tangent of theta over 2 plus this whole thing, k charge squared, 4 L squared, sine squared, theta over 2 is all equal to, if I bring charge times the electric field over to the other side, I get this. Now I just divide by Q and I have my answer. Electric field is equal to, in fact, bring the Q <laughs> on the other side. I don't have to rewrite it all electric field is equal to all of that.